Hi everyone, and welcome to Adult Storytime, Storytime for Adults. I'm your host, Katie, from Adult Services, and for March, we are celebrating Women's History Month. So I wanted to share some really wonderful, innovative women from the book, Wonder Women, by Sam Maggs. And this book is available in print and also on the Axis 360 app. Um, also known as eRead Illinois. So you can find that through our website, um, our e-library link on our website, clpl.org, um, or you can just go to your app store and download Axis, A-X-I-S 360, um, and find it on there with your library card. So today we are going to talk about an awesome woman of science. So go ahead and settle in. Today we're going to talk about Mary Sherman Morgan, an American rocket scientist. All right, here we go. Next time you brush off some task as easy because it's not rocket science, think of Mary Sherman Morgan. For this amazing mid-century woman, it was all rocket science. And basically, none of it was easy. Born on a farmstead in rural North Dakota, so James T. Kirk, Mary was the youngest of six children. She grew up in a family of bullying siblings and indifferent parents who kept her out of school to work on the farm until she was eight years old, when social services stepped in, threatening to arrest Mary's father unless he allowed her to leave the house. The social worker provided Mary with riding lessons and a horse, that would take Mary to and from the one-room schoolhouse. Fortunately, the late start didn't hinder Mary's passion for education. After learning how to read and write while still managing to handle all her farm chores, she focused hard on her schooling and kicked the odds in the teeth by graduating as her high school's valedictorian, despite being three years older than the rest of her graduating class because of enrolling so late. After running away from the farm to study chemistry at DeSales College in Toledo, she lodged a secret. She lodged in secret with her estranged aunt Ida, but her education would hit another bump. Midway through her undergraduate years, the Second World War broke out. Among the upheaval caused by the conflict were new employment opportunities for women. As men headed off to fight, their now vacant jobs had to be filled. Suddenly, a whole swath of the female workforce that might have otherwise been relegated to the secretarial sidelines was able to step up and apply for the openings, with Mary being among them. Sometimes the jobs came knocking. While at college, Mary had been approached by a, quote, local employment recruiter, end quote, who needed, quote, factory workers trained in chemical engineering for a job in, quote, Ohio. As you may have assumed by my prolific use of Quote, scare quotes, <laughs> the job the man presented wasn't quite what it seemed. In fact, the recruiter refused to say exactly what the work was, what the factory made, or where exactly it was located. Fortunately, Mary wasn't afraid of opportunity, even when, quote, opportunity meant, quote, strange dudes offering sketchy jobs, end quote. So she accepted the offer, even when she had to get, quote, top secret security clearance from the U.S. government in order to do so. Hoping to complete her degree later, but also needing money to eat and survive, Mary bailed on college after sophomore year and accepted the position. As it turned out, this supposedly ordinary factory job and, quote, definitely not spy stuff at all, end quote, was in the Plum Brook Ordnance Works Munitions Factory near Sandusky, Ohio, the country's top supplier of gunpowder, producing 400,000 pounds of explosives per day. As an employee, Mary created chemical compounds like DNT, used for making TNT, pentalite, used for firing warheads and bazookas, nitroglycerin, a liquid explosive, and TNT, aka Tri-nitro-tuloine, <laughs> aka the explosive you may recognize from many a Looney Tunes cartoon. An impressive worker, Mary was devastated when she discovered she was pregnant. 
for a Catholic working woman without a husband in the 1940s. Not the best news. And she knew she was on her own when the father, her college sweetheart, dropped off the face of the earth after she told him about their future baby. In 1944, she gave birth to a daughter who was adopted by her cousin, Aunt Ida's daughter, Ruth, married but unable to have children. To afford postnatal care, Mary worked for three weeks at the hospital to, with other unwed mothers. After the war, Mary rocketed ahead, get it, trying to stave off the unemployment that faced so many women after the war. She boarded a bus for California and applied for a job as a theoretical performance specialist with North American Aviation, NAA, an aerospace manufacturer that designed and produced rocket engines, where she would calculate how new propellants were expected to perform. Thanks in large part to the sterling recommendations she brought from Plum Brook, a highly respected institution after the war, Mary was officially hired in 1947. The NAA brought her on as an analyst, a special word for an engineer without a college degree, whom they could therefore pay less money, in the aerophysics lab at the NAA's Canoga Park office, later renamed Rocketdyne. Mary was one of 900 engineers in the company, but the only one without a college degree, and definitely the only woman. Despite seemingly insurmountable odds, Mary was named technical lead on NAA's next big pro contract, developing a new fuel for the Jupiter missile. Contrary to its name, the Jupiter was not a weapon sent to kill aliens on the eponymous gas giant, but rather a standard issue medium range ballistic missile used for blowing up bridges and other military targets. Mary's job was to produce a fuel that would replace the current formulation composed of 25% water and 75% ethyl alcohol, providing a combustion powerful enough to propel a satellite all the way into space, a feat the United States had not yet accomplished. In addition, the fuel had to be stable enough not to cause the rocket to explode on the launch pad, which was happening like all the time. And because the rocket machinery could not be altered, Mary had to improve the, prop the propulsion by changing only the chemical composition of the fuel, a task that most people thought impossible, but that would see Mary facing a pink slip should she fail. Faced with this formidable challenge, Mary developed a fuel made up of 60% unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine and 40% diethyl and diethylenatriamine <laughs> that would get mixed with liquid oxygen or LOX. Mary, being wonderful, wanted to name her new fuel bagel because bagel and LOX, delicious. Unfortunately for the world of rocket science related puns, the US Army settled on the name Hydine. Regardless of what it was called, the fuel worked. Hydine increased thrust by 12% and effectively launched the United States' first satellite, Explorer 1, into orbit on January 1st, 1958. Of course, it was Explorer 1's designer, Werner von Braun, who was lauded as the savior of the space program amid the formation of NASA that July. While working toward this blast of success, get it? Mary, Mary married fellow NAA employee and mathematical engineer, Richard Morgan, and the couple would go on to have four children, one of whom is about to become crucially important to our story. Stay tuned. Mary retired in the late 1950s from an NAA office that then boasted at least a dozen women and pretty much never spoke of her work again. She died in 2004, her passing marked by no major praise or plaudit, even though she was one of the world's first female rocket scientists, without whom we may never have reached orbit. Luckily for planet Earth, Mary's son, George Morgan, was not about to let this injustice stand. After being approached at his mother's funeral by a man who told him that Mary had, quote, single-handedly saved America's space program, and nobody knows it but a handful of old men, end quote, George began digging into her past, and what he found was astonishing, as you know after reading all about it. When the Los Angeles Times refused to publish Mary's obituary because it was unable to verify her accomplishments, 
George set out to make his mom a household name. He wrote a play about her called Rocket Girl, which was produced and performed at the California Institute of Technology in November 2008. Not content with already being the sweetest son ever, George published a complete biography of his mother in 2013. Rocket Girl, America's first female rocket scientist, is 300 pages celebrating the life of this fabulous but forgotten space age heroine. He also swooped in and saved the day when an anonymous editor tried to give Mary's supervisor credit for the invention of Hydine on Wikipedia. Because, let's get real, we know where people get their facts these days. So, now that, all, now that we all know the truth, let's never forget Mary Sherman Morgan, the raddest rocket scientist of them all. Isn't that cool? I, I will say, honestly, I didn't know anything about Mary Sherman Morgan, really, until I um, read this book. So she, she's awesome. Um, makes me think of the women um, uh, in Hidden Figures, the um, human computers, as they were, um, working in similar fields and figuring out the math of, of getting us into space and the moon. Um, and Mary figured out the science, the fuel. So amazing, wonderful work. Just one of so many awesome, cool, innovative, uh, game-changing women featured in this book. So I hope you'll take a, t a moment to look this book up and uh, take a read. We're gonna feature some more awesome women later in the month, so stay tuned. But again, I'll show you the cover. Wonder Women, 25 Innovators, inventors and trailblazers who changed history uh, written by sam mags and great illustrations by sophia foster Domino. um and uh i think it's well worth a read there are more actually than 25 women featured in the book some with smaller profiles featured in at the end of chapters um so you'll get even more than you um, bargained for I hope you really enjoyed today's story time, and I can't wait to see you again for the next one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and stay healthy, stay safe, and we will see you again soon. Bye, everyone.